What's up, Legends? This is Pro Warriors, and today we've got massive updates. The new shoe emulator Fee 35 is finally here, and it's an absolute game changer, especially for all my MediaTek users. This update brings major improvements, crash fixes, and new experimental features that you seriously don't want to miss. Games like Crash Bandicoot, One Piece Odyssey, and Jump Force just got major improvements, and there's a new speed limiter boost too. Stay tuned, because I'm about to break everything down. The new Nyushu Emulator V35, which is an overclock version update, brings a lot of important changes. First of all, they have added V17 and V18 system stubs, fixed RPC issues, and updated external libraries like CubaB and TeasDB. This should improve overall stability and compatibility for many games. One of the biggest changes is that Crash Bandicoot N-Sane Trilogy can now run properly on MediaTek devices. Now all the Crash Bandicoot games in the trilogy are playable without crashes. They also worked on One Piece Odyssey and Jump Force for MediaTek. These games can now boot and play too. Another new thing is that they increased the speed limiter up to 1000, which is experimental as well. This update mainly focuses on better MediaTek support and overall emulator improvements. Let's install the emulator, apply the best settings, and test a few games. Unfortunately, Nyushu doesn't have a GitHub repository yet, but you can get it from a Telegram channel or a third-party source. The developers are already working on setting up a GitHub repository, and it should be available soon. Since Eden is built using Yuzu's source code, the UI and structure look very similar to Yuzu, Sudachi, and Citron. Just like with Citron, you'll need to go through the usual setup, enable notifications, install the product keys, and set up your game directories. The emulator supports both XCI and NSP formats right out of the box. Disclaimer, the emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is forbidden. I do not support or provide access to pirated games, so please use legal copies for your safety. Now the interface might feel familiar, but that's not our main concern. Let's configure the settings, but keep in mind that performance can vary significantly from device to device and game to game. However, you'll gain a clear understanding of how everything works. Click on the gear icon in the bottom right corner, then select Advanced Settings and open the System tab. I recommend turning off the limit speed option so the emulator can utilize your device's full potential. But sometimes, this can actually cause lag because disabling limit speed forces 60 FPS, and some games may not handle that well, leading to stutter and lag issues. If you enable docked mode, it will increase the resolution but might reduce performance. So, keep it disabled if your device isn't powerful enough. In the graphics section, keep CPU accuracy set to normal. You can set the resolution to 4x for high-end devices, but I suggest using 1x, which is 720pi, for a balanced experience. If you're on a low-end device, go with 0.5x for smoother gameplay. Higher resolutions require more power, so adjust this based on your device's capabilities. For V-Sync mode, I recommend using Immediate, which basically means it's turned off. VRAM uses Set Aggressive, Leave Windows binary at default by near. For anti-aliasing method, set it to FXAA. Set anisotropic filtering to 2X. In aspect ratio, choose stretch to window for maximum display coverage. Enable force maximum clocks only if you're using an Adreno GPU, but be cautious as this might cause overheating. Enable use asynchronous shaders to compile shaders asynchronously, reducing stutter, although it may introduce glitches. Enable use reactive flushing to improve rendering accuracy in some games, but note that it might cost some performance. Now go to the debug settings. Here, only Vulkan API is available, so we don't have other choices. Feel free to experiment with these settings to find what works best for your device, and if anything goes wrong, you can always reset to default. Next, head back to the main settings menu, where you'll find an option to install custom GPU drivers. By default, the emulator selects your device's GPU driver, but you can install a custom one for better performance. For this video, I'm using the Qualcomm Adreno 805 driver. To choose the best GPU driver, first check your device's Adreno GPU model using apps like CPU Zed. Then try custom drivers like V615, V630, or V805 from trusted sources to see which offers the best performance. Test each one and stick with the driver that delivers the highest FPS and visual quality without causing overheating. 
Unfortunately, non-Snapdragon users can't access this feature and must rely on default settings. I tested a few games to compare performance with other emulator. The Nushu Emulator V35 update is a massive step forward, especially for all the MediaTek users out there. If you found this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and turn on the notifications so you never miss an update. Take care.